Oh, okay. So it's the the M is loud. Tamara, not Tamara. Tamara. So not, not Tamara. Not Tamara. Because it's almost like they forget when they say Tamara. It's almost like they forget the A after the M. And my name is as it's spelled, Tamara. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. How about <laughs> how about Tammy? Because that's the name of your Instagram. <laughs> Y'all see, I had to bring it in, make sure that all the sound is all right. But that's what I do, though. That's what I do. Trying to make sure everything is on point. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another podcast, the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Yes, sir. And as always, it's the show where I just keep the train moving on the track of this trucking industry vibe that I got going on right now. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, I am back with another interview today. But before I get into all that, I would like to say, don't forget, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. And when this, and when I come live, y'all could just instantly see me when I pop up. If you like, uh, if you like to support the channel, you can do that. Hook your boy up with some coffee because it takes a lot out of me. The Cash App and the Coffee App is in the description. Hook your boy up with some coffee, man. That's dollar sign lockout man. This is also being simulcast live as soon as the as soon as as soon as it works. Hold on, right click. I got to get y'all back. There we go. I got to get y'all back. I hope I'm coming in good. At least, at least I hope I am. Well, in today's podcast, I like to welcome this OG. That's all I. That's that's the only thing that comes to mind with this with with this female driver. Yes, she's a female, and yes, she is a woman of color. Been in the game for 19.5 years. She put the point five, not exactly 20, but as soon as she gets there. She will celebrate it like it's 1999. I would like to welcome to the show, Miss Tammy. Hello. See, Hello. see I, I, I told her in the beginning that I was going <laughs> to apologize to her because I, I beat people's names up. But she was like, nah, bro. Nah, bro. Uh-uh. If you don't say my name right, bro, don't say it at all. I was like, okay, okay, no problem. No problem. So I was like, yo, I, 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 how's Tammy? She said, that's good. That's good. I was like, all right, we're gonna go with Tammy. What's going on, ma'am? How you feel? Oh, uh, everything is going great. How about yourself? Uh, it's going all right. It's going all right. Over here still trying to rock out with this bougie ass phone that I got. You know, I I hear you. I um I'm an Android fan. So of course I went to T Mobile a couple of days ago and picked up the new uh Note 20 5 gz But unfortunately the 5 gz is not everywhere. It's not everywhere. And I am just not getting this. I'm I'm not getting this this phone because it's uh they told me I have to revert back to the 4G because the 5G is not all the way out yet. It's not it's not rolled out yet. So did I waste my money on this phone? I'm still trying to figure See, that first, out. First of all, T Mobile to begin with, that's the wrong service. Anyway, it should don't, be Verizon. Uh, 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 no, but I'm no, also an Android nah. one myself. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. Nah, don't, don't talk about my T-Mobile. I've been down with I've uh, been down with T-Mobile for about five years, and I haven't had no oh problem. I haven't had no problem until I got the Note 20, and I'm starting Garbage to experience. Mm-mm, nah. Let's talk about Verizon, <laughs> though. I, I was with Verizon for over 20 years, though, for real, for real. And mm-hmm. they... They they uh they kicked us off 
Like they they kicked us off because we was grandfathered in. I I was with Verizon when Verizon was AirTouch. You you remember that? Remember AirTouch? I do. You re- I do. Do you remember the service it was before AirTouch though? Now I was a Sprint person at first, mm-hmm. so by us down south, um, AirTouch was kind of kind of bougie, if you would. Mm-hmm. So you'd have the Sprint phone. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. See, before before it was AirTouch, it was uh, Cellular One. Back way. I remember Cellular One. Way yeah. back. Back in the time. Yes, I remember that also. I, I was, yeah. uh, you know, me me and the family, we, we jumped on we jumped on Cellular mm-hmm. One. And throughout the ages, it, it became AirTouch. Uh, it became AirTouch, and then finally Verizon. And back then, they had uh, unlimited internet for thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. They was charging, you know, more for the the talk and the messaging and all like that before the before the internet became popular, right? Right. Now, right now they changed it, and I say maybe about close to. 20 years, I say. I would say about a little. Right. Yeah, I say about 20 years or so that I was with them. They finally sent us a letter saying, yo, you got to choose either get a new contract with the new plan, which at that time they was capping the internet, like seriously. They, they was capping the internet. But they was like, you either get a new plan with a cap internet plan or – or you you just gonna have to bounce. And I was like, after all these right. years, after all these years that I that I've been with them, been a loyal customer, phone after phone after phone after phone. Y'all gonna do us like that. Then well, <laughs> then after they cut us off, they came back about a week later and said, Yo, we got unlimited now. And I was like, ain't this about a bitch? Really? Really, bro? Really? I I had the true unlimited plan. You know, the plan that was unbelievably true, but it is what it is. So bounced over to T-Mobile and uh pretty much pretty much haven't looked back. I mean, you know, I do have my I do have my issues. You know, I do have my issues, but see with T-Mobile, my internet or my 4G service you know, I pay a little bit extra to have continuing 4G service throughout the phone and throughout my, you know, my tablets and my computers because, you know, I do all this stuff from the truck. So, right. But enough. Yeah, same, same here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had Verizon was the better service mm-hmm. going from the East Coast to the West Coast. So I would be the person that would have some phone service still going over the Rockies, mm-hmm. but a lot of people wouldn't. So, I, I got to give it to Verizon. They do, they, they do, they customer service sucks, but they, they yeah. service, they, they do have some good service though. I, I, I do got to give yeah. it to them. I do got to give it to them. I, I would go back to Verizon. Uh, you know, I'm still debating. I'm like one hand says, you know, for the internet, but every time I go and look at what they charging for the internet and how much, uh, how much gigs that they're giving for the internet is it's not mm-hmm. it, it don't work out for me because you know I I do this thing every day and I I burns I I burns through the internet I mean everything like I stream my movies 24 hours a day hell I go to sleep with my tablet on you know what I'm saying I set hey, it up I on hmm I say I got you. I'm with you. I do the same thing. I, I'm not with the with the movies, but I'm watching Comcast or something because I got all the apps and stuff. So I want to be able to have the same experience that I have at home with uh, a lot of variety. Exactly. Exactly. Well, mm-hmm. Tammy, man, let the let the LOM community know who you are and where you come from. All right. Um, well. My nickname is Tammy, but my name is uh, Tamara, Tamara, and um, I am Tamara, not Tamara. 
Yeah, make sure not you get, Tamara, make but sure it's you, Tamara, T A M A R A. Make sure you get that A in there. <laughs> that A is that all important A. Go ahead. It, it definitely is. And speaking of the A, I am born. I am originally born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, I was born on two eighty five. So I'm not an implant. I was born there. So that's where I'm from. My girl says she's not an implant. You know what? I need something. I need something for, I need something for the Georgia Ice. Because I'm, I'm going to say maybe 80% of the people that I have talked to thus far either migrated mm -hmm. down to Georgia or born and raised mm -hmm. In Georgia, what is what is the aura? Mm -hmm. What is the what is, what is the what is the grab? What what grabs a person to go down to Georgia? Uh, <laughs> I, I ask the same question. I think I think sometimes this I want to say is maybe the sexiness of the city for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's still that country city that had a lot of add-ons so I mean we had the Olympics we we got a lot of famous rappers I mean hey the civil rights movement started there so I mean it's a lot of history it's a lot of stuff to do it's a lot of stuff going on uh, so I guess that's what brings people down I mean it's baby Hollywood now so I, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to put on top of that <laughs> that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what is the aura to to come down there? And you're right. It's it's a lot of famous rappers down there. You got Ti. You got the Dungeon yeah. Family. You got uh. You got Outkast. Jeezy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, all of them trap trap music from trap music. from from Georgia. That's yeah. that started all down down there, man. Ludacris. Well, it, no, well, Luda, Luda. Well, I mean, Luda from from Chicago, but I mean, you know, he that's migrated where he down to Georgia, Georgia. right? <laughs> His mother put him in that situation, and so yeah, I mean, he's there. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess because I'm a native, I don't, um, I'm over all of that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the west side. When I say west side, like I'm, I'm about. Uh, thirty miles away from the Alabama line. I'm that far away from the city. Wow. The only time I see all of that is when I'm coming down I 75. That is the only time I see it. That's it. Well, you, 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 you're about you, you, you're about my age. You, you are about my age. So, yeah. people, okay. check this, check this out, people. <laughs> check this out now. Check this out now. This is a 19.5 year female, black female driver, man. I mean, I got to give her an applause. Yep. For, I got to give her an applause for that, man. That shit is unfucking believable, man. That right. shit is Thanks. that shit is unbelievable. God, congratulations to making it this long in 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 the trucking field, man. What 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 what? what how how did you do it? How how did you manage to stay? You know how how did you manage to stay this long in the in 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 the trucking field without you know a lot of people like yo I'm done with it. You know, I'm 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 tired of it. You though, what? what? <laughs> well, for me, I've I've always been very aggressive and very very ambitious. So when initially when people see me, the first thing they are always say, okay. Um, uh, tell him to put it in this door and that door. And I'd be like, nope, I'm the driver. And I, those are some of the things that are, that are very, uh, motivating to me. But it's like the first time, I mean, I was in the healthcare field before I got into, into trucking. And 
just so happened one day, and I'm not, I don't have a rag to riches story and all that. Um, just one day I was on my way to work and I was coming around by the Petro off of 285 and I just so happened just to look up in the truck, just happened to be li- looking, listening to music, sitting in traffic and just look up and I saw this woman and I was like, damn, she's about as small as I am. And I was like, hmm, I wonder exactly what, what that takes. And I started thinking to myself, okay. I don't have anything holding me back. I don't have any kids. Um, and at that time, both of my parents were deceased. Oh, I'm so, sorry to hear that. Um, oh, that's, that's fine. Thanks, though. Um, so I was like, all right, well, maybe I should just do this. And so, like I said, I'm very ambitious. And once I start looking into something and I do a little research, and of course, back then, the only thing we had was AOL, a little dial-up. So, um, I went on the internet, got a little information, and, and the one thing people kept saying every time I made a phone call, just come in and see us or whatnot. And I went out to a school in uh, Conyers, Georgia, Georgia Driving Academy, got a little information from them. They told me to go and get the book from the uh, DMV. I went to, when I got the book, during that process, I was a supervisor on my job. I supervised uh, five group homes. And so uh, since I was a supervisor, I could kind of bounce around the way that I needed to. And in between that time, I was just studying. I went to school on the weekends for nine weekends in a row. And after that, I was on my plane ride to Dallas, Texas, and I started out with Stevens Transport. Okay. That's, that was it. That's what's, that's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. You know, I was about to ask you to, I was about to ask you how you got started mm-hmm. and everything, but let, let me ask you this. Now, back then, of course, there was the mm-hmm. brick internet. You know what I'm saying? Me and her, we was, yeah. ta- we was talking, yeah. you know, we was, before we got on, we was talking about our, our services and she's not a fan of T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a fan of Verizon, <laughs> but we both knew what it was way back in the day. And and way back in the day, it was AOL, the dial up, the yeah, the dial up, <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Real real right. quick, uh, what's up, Chicago BBW? Um, she says, "What do you love about trucking? What is your what? What do you love, and what do you dislike about it?" Well, what I love about it, I love because now I'm doing something a little bit differently. But when I was traveling all over the place, I just like going into new places, just new new places, new places, and I love the challenge. There was not anything I was going to bag down from. You know, there would be some things that I needed to take a deep breath before I proceeded on to do it. But um, I never, I don't know. It was this thing about me where there was no fear. And, and what do I dislike? Um, I'm disliking now. I'm disliking how now, maybe the last 10 years, how it, the industry has become, has become kind of petty. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. is like really in competition with each other. And I look, the, the times that we're living in now for, for those who are uh, younger than us, look, it's always been the way that it's been, but a lot of people haven't been acting on, how they're acting on things now. Yep. And I'll say this, I don't care where you were, if you were going through something, struggling with maybe sliding tandems, or maybe you were just closing the door. It was always a gentleman around. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I need a man to come and do anything. And I'm not saying I don't need nor like men. Let me make that clear. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, now. I'm just, I'm just, okay. But I'm, I'm just saying that now it's almost like, you know, everybody's just super nasty now. And there's hardly any camaraderie amongst anyone. So that's what I'm disliking about it now. 
20 or uh, or 19 let me get it right now 19.5 years in the game as a female driver uh let's go back to when you when you started so you came out of you came out of school we're going to fast forward that you came out of school and you say you went down to you you, you started at c is that crst no 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 steven transport oh, Stevens. they are out of uh Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, Stevens Transport. Now, now back yes. then, now, now back then, back 19.5 years ago, <laughs> we we didn't have we didn't yes. have Facebook. We didn't have all no, these didn't. all these trucking companies, you know, bombarding us in our in our in our feeds and everything. How did you Right. How did you as a as a female? How did you do your homework? <laughs> And how did you come across picking Stevens Transport as your first company? Well, um, that that particular school, they were connected. And when I say they were connected, the first day I went out to speak to them, they had recruiters from, I mean, some of the major companies that are still out now. But mm-hmm. they had like those... Um, they had like those little vinyl little covers on their doors. It'll tell you Snyder. It'll it'll say Warner. It'll say Swift. Or excuse me, at that time it was MS Carrier. Um, those people would be constantly at at the school. And so um, I mentioned that I went to school for nine weekends. So you would have people who would come in on uh, early Sunday mornings, and they would kind of like do. Uh, small um they would they would do smaller introductions to their company and stuff like that but for me again as a female i didn't want it easy i wanted to i wanted to learn to drive the truck i wanted that experience so i wanted to shift gear i didn't want it easy most of the girls excuse me most of the women they went with U.S. Express. And even back then, as he keeps saying, 9.5 years ago, <laughs> U.S. Express was, was getting into the automatic game. And everybody was like, really in the automatic? And so they assumed that all of us wanted to do that. And I was like, nope. So um, they came in. More people came in and stuff. And then a person for Stevens Transport came in and then they, I don't know, it, it was the structure about them and that they, this, this, this guy, he came in with this really, this no nonsense attitude. And he was like, you're going to have to work. You're going to, you're going to have to dedicate yourself to this. And, and so then I just started looking into it and stuff. And it was the structure. I, I love the structure of Stevens Transport. Uh, I know now that we live in a time also that a lot of people don't, nobody can tell me what to do and blah, 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 blah. But if it's something that you've never done before, you are going to have to listen to someone, whether they are older than you or they may be a peer, you know, but you're going to have to learn to listen to someone. And I just love their program. I love the structure of the program. If you couldn't come out of there, 9.5 9.5 years ago knowing how to drive a truck that that was your bad so back then so back then you you they, they even back then they was they was coming in the automatics they well u.s express was like kind of migrating towards all in all automatic fleet anyway back then what about stevens transport uh, mm-hmm. they when did they you know started nope. started converting towards uh, an automatic fleet with them. Uh, uh, all bullshit aside. Oops, I'm sorry. Can no, I, can I yeah, go ahead, girl. This, this, uh, I, I give it to you. Go ahead. Okay. It's uh, ironically enough, my truck that that um, that I have now. Um, I got my truck back in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an old. Stevens Transport 2014 KW, and it's a 10, uh, I'm sorry, it's a Super 10. So I want to say here, maybe over these last couple of years, they just started getting automatic trucks because this truck right here, it, it's a stick. Mm. 
So are you so back then back then you you mm-hmm. you 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 was doing you was doing the damn thing as far as uh as far as uh uh shifting gears and everything like that. How was training how, how was training back then? Because now back then <laughs> I, I'm I'm assuming training back then mm-hmm. was like was like a little bit more intuitive than training now because you know the guys now uh yeah yeah right yeah. Uh, yeah i take that same attitude um uh, they did this um this this compatibility like quiz they gave you this this little quiz questionnaire what have you and they asked you questions about yourself and they asked for you to be totally honest because they said this was the best way for them to match you up with a trainer because they found that if they just threw two people together that I forgot the percentage that they gave but it was a high turnover level um, a high turnover with people uh, having to get back on the Greyhound or either getting brought back to the uh, terminal because they didn't get get along with each other. So me and my trainer, um, I was trained by a man. And um, he... Now, hold up, honestly, hold, up, hold up right quick before... Let me hold up right quick. Let me interject for a second. You was trained by okay. a man back then. Mm-hmm. It, wasn't, yeah. it, it wasn't about no bullshit back then, right? I mean, he was there to train you, right? Yeah, he was there to train me. There you right. go. Continue. Okay. Yeah. So um, it was it was interesting how they set that whole thing up. He wasn't able to come back to the terminal and get me. Long story short, they flew me from Dallas to San Antonio. I got in the in a little cab, met him at the Petro right there off of uh, I ten and I thirty five down there. And um, got on the truck with him. He, before I even got in the truck good, he laid down all the rules of his truck. And I respected that because it was like, basically, don't get in here with the bullshit. He said, if, if you, he said, if you did not come to drive and listen to me, he said, you might as well just go back home or either go back to Dallas. And he said to me, he said, I don't have time to play with anyone. Mm. I was like, okay. Mm. Straight straight up G. I'm not easily offended. Right, exactly. And and I think that if I'm going to, if I'm going to be with somebody in that type of situation, I definitely want that person to give it to me straight. I don't want you to bullshit me. So I got on the truck. He told he talked me through the computer, talked to me about a whole bunch of different things, the things that he expected when I got in that seat. And that was it. How long you was out with him? Um, I want to say we were out for maybe eight weeks. Now let maybe me, eight weeks. Now, and and that was some home time in between. Now now let me ask you this. Now now back then, back then the 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 relationship between uh between trainer and trainee was was a respectful thing right it wasn't no, it, it wasn't like you said it wasn't no bullshit you got in there you he, right. you got in there with this guy through the entire eight weeks and uh mm-hmm. and and you you came away knocking out gears bopping i mean bumping dots uh Sliding tandem, sliding fifth wheels, and all that good shit. I came out doing the best I could, of course. You know, of course, just like everybody else, you have you have your issues. But um, as far as my driving stamina at that time, uh, I would always get in that seat at night, and wherever it was we had to be at. Once he woke up, we were there. Oh so wait, he I had, oh he had that much faith in you that he was actually that he well, actually went that, to. I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. He would go. He would. I don't think he would be sleep all of the time, but I know that he got back there and got comfortable. <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> and look, and, and look, we 
we were in a company truck. He was the owner operator. So, of course, he wasn't with it. I mean, I trained in a uh, classic XL with the two stacks on the side. What? A big white classic. Yes. Wait, he wait, he let you he let a trainee a female. A, a female too. Yes. <laughs> a female a I'm black let that slide a, right now. A yes. black a black female. Yes. He let you drive yes. that big boy. Oh and, and his own truck. A, and, and and he was a black male. Yes. Yes. Oh hell yeah. He had that yeah. much faith. Oh because now yeah. that once he saw once he saw, I guess, he, I guess you know, and we got to talking a little later on, but once he saw that, I guess I wasn't playing, and I wasn't, and I'm not trying to be funny, ladies, but this is a, a, a problem that I see now, mm -hmm. but I wasn't trying to be cute or anything like that. I was too into what was going on, like, I, I mean, I was, like, ready. That, that was my thing. I was excited, so... Whenever it was my time, hey, I was ready to get in the seat. And like I said, going back to how they matched us up, it was it was almost like being with a big brother or the homie. You know, he was in the music just like I was, and mm -hmm. he talked a lot of shit like I did. So it was, you know, it was it was cool, and it was it was good to be around somebody like that. That you know, we weren't so polar opposite in that we couldn't, you know, have a conversation. And then when it came that moment when it had to be teacher and student moment that there was going to be any uh, disrespectful stuff going on. There so, you go. There you uh, go. We got along. And uh, I, I haven't talked to him since last year, but we're still in touch. Okay. I was just about to ask you that if you, if you guys are still in yep. touch with each other. That's yeah, that, man. That that's that's one hell of a story, man. That is a fucking awesome story right there. Um, my man Jay Moss, what's good, bro? Jay Moss says you sound like a Southern gal. Yes, she is a Southern girl, born and raised in Georgia. I am Southern. Yes, born yep, and raised in Georgia. Southern. You can you can hear the thick accent. Yes, sir. Uh, so. Yeah. So tell me, man, tell me, tell me, tell me now that, you know, now that, you know, throughout the years, how many, comp how many companies have you been through? How many companies have you been through throughout the years? Woo! <laughs> well, <laughs> so I was, uh, I started out with Steven, um, from Steven. I went to uh, Swift at Swift that was merging with MS Carrier. I say I say with Swift, believe it or not, a lot of people talk crap about Swift, but back then Swift Swift really wasn't what it kind of morphed into, and I still don't see it as being bad. It just all depends on which region you're in. Um, but um, I say with Swift for like four and a half years. Um, now I'll, and I'm very honest, I'm very transparent. Now I'm going to say this and people say, well, oh, so you tore some shit up. Nope. I cursed somebody out. I got fired from Swift and I got fired from Swift because I was a trainer. I eventually became a trainer and, um, I had a train, a trainee that was, uh, dyslexic okay. and, I saw that because, as I mentioned before, I became a became a, uh, a truck driver. I was in the medical field, and I worked with people with disabilities. Right. And it was one of those things that I saw because, it, and for those who don't understand dy dyslexia, people usually do the opposite of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And this was one of those things that he that he did, it, and he did it like kind of like constantly. So. I wasn't like on him or anything, but it was a lot of correcting. And it, and again, it wasn't that he, he was ignorant or anything. Cause I don't want to call him stupid, but it was as if his brain was wired, uh, backwards. Okay. So I was telling them and we were still on paper logs. I explained to them, I said, he does the 
the total opposite of what needs to be done. And I said, it's not, <clears throat> it's not on purpose. And I said, I feel like he needs more time. And they was like, no, he's ready. He's ready to go out. And this was during that time where round 05, 06, when that's when they start rushing people out of training. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know anything about Georgia, and for those of you drivers that know anything about I-75 going south in Georgia, that scale, the Forsyth scale, that's a scale that would tear your ass up. Mm -hmm. And he got to that scale, and he he hadn't been doing his law book. He hadn't did his law book in two weeks. And again, at that time, you were like responsible for your trainee for like a month after they got off your truck. So you're you're calling whoa, this person whoa, asking whoa, whoa, how whoa, they're doing. Whoa, like, whoa, no. whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, back up, back up. He was already uh, off okay. your he was already off your truck, and then he, he got was off he, my truck at the time, and he got into a situation at the scale. He got into a situation at the scale. Okay. And, and, I, and you got, before, and, and you was responsible for that? Yeah, they're saying that because of your teaching style. And I took a lot of pages out of my trainer's book. I took a lot of pages out of his book. Right. And I, I was so anal that I had a little small syllabus because, and we were on the truck with each other for six weeks. But okay. I kept telling them in the training department that this dude wasn't getting it. I kept telling them he wasn't getting it. But again, like I said, this was at one of those times when they start pushing people to get out of the truck quick. Come on, we need them out here on the road, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, I don't think he's ready. They signed off on him. They gave him a, they gave him a truck. He started delivering freight. Came into Forsyth, Georgia. They must have gave him the red light at that time. Told him to come in, bring your law book and your paperwork. Boom. He hadn't did his law book in two weeks. And I think he would may have may have been off my truck maybe three weeks at that at that time. Whoa, two weeks? So, yeah. How is and how is this man driving? Was, hey, back then. I mean, come on, as long as you knew how to get from point A to point B, because, I mean, a law book back then, what? All you had to do, you were being entrusted to stop and draw lines. So I guess maybe he got a little overwhelmed because after that situation, I never spoke to him again. But I guess he got a little overwhelmed and that's what happened. And again, I'm just speculating. But we got into this big thing about it. I was called in, the operations manager, me and him had some words. And, you know, <laughs> hey, it was back and forth. He wanted to talk down to me. And I was like, no, no, because I kept telling you all about him. And so anyway, so that was Swift. That's number two. Okay. Swift, oh, oh, hold, on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. Wait. Wait okay. now before you okay. before you leave from Swift. Uh I, 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 I'm I'm confused on you you getting terminated because of what this dude did. That was their fault right. for well, for not listening to you and and putting this man in experience man mm -hmm. in the seat, knowing that he still needed more time. And they they get rid of absolutely. they got rid of you. Are you absolutely? You can't be serious. Well, and some of these situations is more of is is more of the kiss the ring thing, and then again, I started off the show telling you how aggressive I was, right? And how I'm not gonna take anybody's shit because right. I wasn't raised I wasn't raised that way. Um, I spent more time with my father, and one of his things was he didn't give a damn about having two girls. We were not supposed to be stupid women. And so being that type of person and speaking up and letting people know, not being disrespectful. So don't, don't misunderstand that, mm -hmm. but I'm explaining to you. And it's been a constant thing. This was uh, through a lot of communication because I was on a dedicated account and we were coming in just about every other day into the terminal. Okay. So, you know, maybe about the third week, I'm telling them, um, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I don't think this is good. Hey, he has issues with this. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Their thing used to be was, can he drive? 
And I was like, you know, he can drive. Wow. He understood that. Can he back up? He did pretty good with that. Mm. Does he follow simple directions? I said, yes, but he was the type of person at like five, six weeks, because at five, six weeks, I sh- at that time, we can go back to the bunk. But at five, six weeks, he couldn't do that because if I say, all right, when you get up to this exit right here, go to the right. I will write things down. Make a right. And as soon as you straighten up for making that right, you make another right. The facility is going to be on your left-hand side once you make it. You cannot miss a big Goodyear warehouse. But he did. Wow. And they and and, so and they it, and 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 Swift said, it's, "Let's get rid of the trainer and not the and, and not the trainee." That's that's crazy. And not I, the trainee. I I, I talked to uh you know I talked to a female. Her name is Shape World. She was um mm-hmm. she was uh she was she became a trainee or not trainee. She became a trainer with mm-hmm. Swift mm-hmm. and. Uh, mm-hmm. And something happened with her and her trainee. Well, something happened to her trainee, and they terminated her. And I, I, I and I, I, and I thought it was just, you know, hey. But since you know your story, you know the same. Mm-hmm. You know when you tell your story about it, that's like, whoa, that's. Are they doing that? Are they doing that across the board? Like. Getting rid of they trainee, I mean they 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 trainers, and god damn it, man, you must have been a good one for them to even ask you to be a trainer. And you've been with the company for four years. Are they that they, they hey, doing they you know. they they doing it like that at well, I guess they doing it like that. Well, I guess they still doing it like that. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, even at that time, and like I said, they were lax, they were becoming very lax. That was also at a time when people who hadn't even been on their own for six months started becoming trained. See, that's when all that crap started. All that crap started back then. And like I said, this was like 2005, 2006. Wow. All that started back then. Wow. Well, where, so other yep. than, so Swift the longest, so uh, mm-hmm. where, where you well, been, where time, you Swift was the- Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? What'd you say now? No, Swift wasn't the longest, but go right ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying in between time and in the meantime, you know, where, where, you know, where from and where to. And also, if you could, you know how many miles you, uh, you generated? I, I know you gotta be, I know you gotta be a million miler by now, if, if not more. Well, I'm past them. I'm, I'm past a million, but I never stuck, stuck with that number of, uh, I, I've been in every state in the union except for uh, uh, um, excuse me, Hawaii. I've been to Canada two times. Uh, I've been over every major mountain. Uh, like I've been everywhere. How how was I, no- how, how how was mountain driving with when you first hit your first mountain? How, how did that make you feel? Um, it was it was a little weird. I, and I guess the 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 best part of it at that time was was that big hood because Stevens, um, their qualifications for getting off the trainer's truck, you had to hit four major mountains, um, in in four parts of the country. So we did everything over in the northwest. Back on, um, back over to the uh, to the northeast, um, back down into California, like we did everything. So, um, I guess the most interesting part of doing a mountain was probably on my own the first time I ever, um, I did I sixty four over in West Virginia, and that shit was scary. Now, I, I was, I, I was about, about to that. ask you, was you, was you scared? Was you, was you honestly scared? I, I was 
scared. Um, and I don't scare very easily, but I will say that was one of those times that I was very scared. I had a Tyson's chicken load and it was one night and I don't know. Um, I might've got a little nervous, grabbed that wheel and, you know, just kept, um, kept, uh, just kept punching the brakes, kept, kept hitting them and, those brakes, they started smoking back there, and this guy got on the uh, CB, and he just, he said, he said, look, Stevens, I'm going to get in front of you, and he said, I'm going to get you down this mountain. And like, I was, I was scared shitless. They had to uh, bring somebody out and uh, had to change out the brake drums and, and everything, and maybe a tire or two. So I'll, I'll say I, that was, I 64 was scary, but now, I do it like a champ now. <laughs> That's what's up. That's how it is. That's where the experience uh, come in at. That's where the experience come in at. Uh, Mother Trucking Mom, Absolutely. what's going on? Who am I interviewing? I am interviewing Tammy today. Yes, 19.5 year driver with over a million miles. Yo, I mean, she she's awesome right now, man. J Most, can she back? Of course she can back, bruh. <laughs> Of course she can back. 19.5 oh years, man. Come on. I think she can do it with uh, her eyes closed now, man. I, I don't know. Well, that's probably might going a little bit too I can, far. No, nah, I can back up an ant's ass. So, you know. So tell him he can try me on one of his best days. I got him. <laughs> Tammy, man, like, on your on your best days, what what is some what what are some of the what are some of your best days out here in trucking in the 19.5 years? <laughs> some of my best days just used to be just riding, riding out west. I used to love just to grab a load, whether I was coming out of Chicago or either coming off the East Coast somewhere and just riding out I-40 or either just getting on I-10 and just riding. That, that used to just be my thing. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So overall, has so overall throughout the years, has it has it been relatively relatively smooth? Uh, if not, what were some of the struggles along the way? Um, that cockiness, learning how to be humble, um, uh, kind of that because you you've been so on top of things and when it has come to some some times that I've had to really listen to people and I didn't listen to people uh, this is my second time being an owner operator and this is one of those things that I tell people all the time about listening to people um, because there are a lot of people out here that has a whole hell of a lot more experience than you and they can they can get you through some things. And I used to think because I knew something about the truck and I knew how to run the truck that that's all it was going to take to just be successful and do the, do everything the way that I wanted to do. Um, but that, that came back and, and kicked me in my ass big time. And in a result of not listening to people, and in that situation, because I I was in a group of people and we were leased on until uh, we were leased onto a very small carrier, and um, he trusted all of us after a while to get our own freight and just do what we wanted to do. And um, I screwed up some great opportunities because I couldn't get out of my own way. So if I had to say that. If I had some bumpy moments, that was one of the most bumpy times of my life as okay. far as the truck drivers being concerned. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh what do you what do you you coming in uh as a as a female driver back in the day, uh, of course you you know, mm -hmm. you you learning you learning the ropes and everything. You trying to you trying to learn the ropes from from the veterans and stuff like that. The veteran drivers back in the day. Have any of them discouraged you? And if so, how you handle that? <laughs> there used to be a lot of a lot of men 
they will always say stuff like, um, why are you out here? Um, why, why aren't you at home trying to have kids? Mm. Um, trucking is not for a woman. Uh, mm. what do your parents think about this? What does your family think about that? But then on the, on the flip side, there were a lot of, that was a lot of encouragement. There were a lot of veteran drivers that would see you out and know that you were new, you know, especially if you work for the same company and they would buy you lunch, buy you dinner, and they would sit down and they would talk to you, you know, um, ask you about things and then start giving you advice. And I, to this day, I will never stop taking advice from people. I think some, that was some, I learned a lot of valuable lessons with um, taking some of that advice from some of those people. Man, that's so awesome back in the day because, you know, back in the day, there was, there, the drivers was there to help one another. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no, there wasn't, yeah. well, you know, cell phones was coming in, you know, coming into play back then. But, yeah. you know, the internet, you know, the technology that we have now, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all like that, you know, back then, right. y'all, 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 camaraderie was to meet up at a petrol and sit down at the at the at the at the uh at the buffet at the end of the day and 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 talk shop how was it like that back in the day well again i mean people not being the way that they are now i mean i mean they were but they weren't you know again people when you would go and sit down at the petrol or something at uh up at the little bar, people would start having conversations. They would start talking to you and stuff, you know, and, and again, just start give, giving you pointers. People people would talk to each other more then, you know, and they would always, if you were new, they always had something to say or if they saw you out trying to park or something or you're doing a free trip or something, somebody would always walk over and point out something and say, hey, think about doing this and doing that and stuff. So, Again, I I I learned a whole lot from people back then. Okay, that's what's up. Now you mentioned that you this is your second time as being an owner operator. Uh, mm -hmm. Your first time as an owner operator, did you did you go out uh, and and brought your own truck? You leased your own truck, or did you yes. lease one with with a company and did their program? No, uh, -uh I went and got my own truck. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what's up. Now, from that, mm -hmm. from, from that point of migrating mm -hmm. from a company driver, what made you, what, what made you, I don't know, what, what made you decided to go owner operator? Well, uh, 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 back again, back then it, you know, money, even though a lot of people would probably beg to differ, but Money was was different and definitely easier to get to at that time. Um, you you would know someone that maybe had their own authority or something, and they had they were getting contracts and stuff. Not saying that people aren't getting them now; they are, but they they are not paying the money now at at all. But um, it it was just easier to hustle then. It, it was it was an easier hustle. It was there. Uh, for instance, I used to uh, run military freight from Fort McPherson, which is uh, anybody familiar with Atlanta? That's off of uh, off of uh, Moreland Avenue, off of 285, and I was running out to San Antonio. I would just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that was that was easy money. So knowing people, knowing a lot of people, and that would be, they were like, well, hey, why don't you come and do this because of the way that you run? You know, everything used to be based on how somebody runs. You know, people don't base that off of running now. Everybody just want to be at home now. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of us did. Like, we ran. We would get out and we would just run. You know, and, and it was always the quicker you can get there, the more money that you can make. So, you know, it, I was, shit, it was addictive. <laughs> so, that's for me, that's why it was. Um, that's why I got into it because nobody was holding my hand. 
you know, but like I said, I let a, a let a few things get in my way, not necessarily let anything get to my head, but I definitely let some things get in my way. And that's why I failed at it the very first time. But so you, it wasn't but the experience, so much but it was just a, the experience, the experience is there, though. You learned that you learned oh, from yeah. that experience. You didn't let that failure stop oh, yeah. you, right? Right, absolutely. Exactly, absolutely. exactly. But uh, I, I definitely put a lot of time in between that first time to this next time. I put a lot of time because I, I always say to people, and I just said to someone the other day, I never would have become a, um, a owner operator again if the company that I was working for at that time, if they wouldn't have never went out to um, went out of business. I I gravitated to smaller companies. Um, I like the smaller company feel. I like when walking in and into the office, everybody knew you. You know, I, I like that. I like when it was 150 trucks or less, you know, and we just had our little thing that we did. I, I was into that. So a company that I worked for uh, out of uh, Oakwood, Georgia, it's out of uh, business now. The name of it was um, RWH. Mm-hmm. They, um, <laughs> um, I, I absolutely love that company. And all I did was um, ran from, from Atlanta back over to Las Vegas, Las Vegas back to Atlanta, Atlanta back out to California, California maybe back over to uh, Florida and back up into Georgia, maybe up into the Northeast Pennsylvania or New York or something like that. But that was it, you know, and like I said, they went out of business and this opportunity, (laughs) well, not necessarily an opportunity, but I guess a decision because I'm not a big company person. I, I cannot get lost in that mix. So, um, a company I had an affiliation with uh, back in the day, I went and got a truck and I leased on to them and that was it. Tammy, tell me, tell me back then, 19.5 years ago, <laughs> what was, what, what was, <laughs> you said the money. Yes. The money. What was the average company driver making back then versus what a company driver making now? <laughs> Well, again, because I work at smaller companies, so what they're making now is what I was making. Well, well, let me, let me, let me not do that because mm-hmm. take your time, take your time. I know, <laughs> I know the smaller companies, the ones that I found, they pay more. Like, say for instance, maybe back in maybe two thousand or eight or so. Heartland was just now advertising 40 cents a mile. Well, I was already making 40 cents a mile at that time. Mm -hmm. So, but that right there for them was because they're a regional based company. So I guess it was broken up in the regions and stuff that you worked at. But I mean, wherever I drove, that was the money that I was making. So I really don't know what kind of money company drivers are making right now, because pretty much I, Everybody I talk to and deal with, they are on operators. But I know um, what I used to do running back and forth from from Georgia to maybe Las Vegas and down to Cali. That that's seven that's seven days going from Atlanta to Vegas and then ended up in California. That next Friday, that probably that probably would be anywhere from twelve to probably fifteen hundred dollars. So I mean, that's a small check. <laughs> that was up. I mean, but that was that was good money, you know. In that instance, now being that you was an owner operator the first time, and of course, you know, you went through your troubles. Did you did did you still mm-hmm. did you still maintain your truck? Was you still was you able to keep your truck? back then and are you in that same oh okay so you had to get so you had to get the truck up because of the situation i had to i had to give it up because of the situation oh all right so uh so in between you you know you you went back to being a company driver to get your to get your you know to get yourself to back to where you want to be to be an owner operator right now how has how long you been the owner operator now and how has the journey been for you so far? 
I've been a uh, I've been back in my own now since uh May of twenty seventeen and it's been good. I mean, you know, you're gonna have your ups and downs or what have you, but um I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm I'm making I'm making my decisions, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. Um I have uh tweaked it a little bit, you know, um, because everything is not for everybody. So I went back to a company that that dispatches me, but I'm more happier now and I'm not stressed out. That's- I am not a low board person. So for those of you who say, Oh, the low board is easy to each his own potato uh, potato potato. I'm not a low board person. I just want to get the freight and I want to move. That's all I want to do. I was about to ask you. So you so you let you 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 confident in the dispatcher that you have to get you the freight that you want. Oh, very uh, very confident. Very confident. I'm I'm moving. Okay. I'm moving. I make that phone call and I move. The, ha- um the ha- only time I was about to ask you have has it been has it been a little tumultuous this year for you? Uh, as far as getting freight? No. No, the only time things kind of got a little crazy for us is when COVID uh, came in. Yeah, we that's got a yeah, little this year. Slow. Yeah, we got a little slow that, that month when it first hit because there were like uh, breakouts and stuff everywhere um, at our main customer. So they were having a lot of people that were sick and stuff. So they were closing down plants and stuff until they cleaned it all up and stuff. But mm-hmm. after that, that was it. We're full speed ahead. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. How confident, uh, uh, other than your dispatcher, but how confident are you with the whole company that you leased on to? Um, I'm, I'm confident in them. I'm very confident in them. Again, I work for a very small company. Okay. It's a very small company. So do you? So, but let me ask like you. I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I like I said, I intentionally seek them out. Um, I, 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 because again, I feel like this, and and I'm gonna apologize firsthand. I, I loved being with Landstar, but I'm gonna say this: it becomes a damn rat race because. Everybody is trying to get or do the same thing. And it becomes very frustrating and aggravating. So when, you know, when I made that move from from there to where I am now, like I said, when I make that phone call at 730, 845 in the morning, I got a load. It's no, well, we need you to wait. We um we don't have any freight today or nothing like that. You know, like I said, when COVID first came in, yeah, but I'm very confident in them. Okay. Okay, Tammy, 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 19.5 years. That's what's up. That's what's up. Tammy, tell me. Woo, talking to you, man. I, I I'm just sitting back, relaxing, listening. To the uh to the stories, man, and just just feeling all sorts of vibes right now. Tell me, tell me, what what sets you what, what sets you apart from most uh from other drivers? Um, I really I really like what I do. I don't um I don't take I don't do my job with damn why am I doing this I'm doing it because I really want to do it and and I mean you speak to a lot of drivers and a lot of them are, are very unhappy with a lot of the things that they're doing so I'm just I really like doing what I do I like driving that's what's up that is what's up um man I mean not like I said I'm, I'm just sitting here in awe of you right now man I am in awe of you. 19.5 years. It's, that's a milestone for you. You know what I'm saying? Did, did you ever think, did Did you ever thought that you was going to be in this industry for this long period of time? No, I didn't. Um, I didn't, you know, just like everybody else, you know. Uh, okay, I'm I'm this old. So, okay, what am I going to do? Am I am I gonna stay in this? And then I start thinking about okay, if 
if I'm going to go back to school, that's going to take a lot of time. You know, do I really want to go back to school? And then, okay, if I'm going to stay in the, in the industry, well, what what exactly am I going to do? Am I going to stay a company driver or am I going to start making some moves and figuring, just figuring things out? So, I mean... I'm I'm here. I'm still now, here. Now you know being <laughs> so on my point. Oh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you was finished. Go ahead. I was just gonna say my my plan because I know a lot. Sometimes it doesn't work, but my plan is for another ten years. That that's my original plan because things are really changing now. Things yeah. are starting to become automated. There are a hell of a lot more trucks out here than it used to be. Um, like I said before, it's it's competitive for no damn reason because you are not probably going where I'm going. So, um, it's, it's, it's not only just more trucks, it's more cars, you know? So, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It, that right there kind of takes the joy out of it a little bit, you know, because you, you spend most of your time in traffic trying to get to somewhere and, and it's an accident here and it's an accident there, you know, or when you get to a customer, somebody can't back up into a door. So that's taking 10, 15 minutes, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff when it then used to take away from uh, what didn't used to take away from what you you did each and every day. Man, Tammy, being an owner operator for uh, from a female perspective. Uh, of course, it's a lot. It's a lot different than being an owner operator than from from a from a male. But being an owner operator from mm-hmm. a female perspective, do you feel that you have more to prove uh, out here than uh, than a male being an owner operator? No, <laughs> no, I don't have anything to prove to anybody. I know my truck. I know what I'm doing. Um, no, I don't have anything to prove to anybody. My, it's for me to stay safe and, and, you know, make sure that that money is arriving, uh, into Wells Fargo every Friday on time. <laughs> I have nothing to prove. I'm, I'm, I am not running down the road thinking about, you know, people when it comes to that. And again, that's why I brought up the competition thing because, uh, you find a lot more people now trying to compete and they're doing this and doing that because of somebody else doing it and stuff. And, you know, why aren't you doing it for the love of it? Um, I've been noticing here lately, there are a lot of people um, <laughs> getting trucks, but they have no idea what to do with them. They don't know anything about the truck. They're turning on the truck and looking at the dashboard and asking questions, taking pictures and saying, what's this icon? Oh my God! Don't, oh my God! Oh my God! I mean the fake. Oh man, I, I that's one of my personal pet peeves, man. You go in the Facebook yeah. group yeah. and everybody and their mama uh-huh. take a picture. Hey, everybody is do this. Uh, do this weight look good? I'm like, bro, you should yeah. already know what your weight's supposed to be. Well, what's this icon right, right here? You support well, right? I mean, maybe you know, maybe now new jacks that's coming in because I I say this before too, like they pay me to drive this motherfucker. They don't pay me to, they don't pay me to, you know, uh, take care, you know, well, take care of it to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. Like check for the oil, uh, check for the oil, make sure that the res- uh check for the um. The uh, coolant. fluids, the coolants, and all like that. Mm-hmm. But everything beyond that, you know, I leave that up to the, you know, I leave that up to to them to take care of their trust when you take it in to get, you know, to get your PM. Now, some old school drivers, right. some old school drivers feels that, hey, you should know your truck. But these new school yeah, drivers, been- these new school drivers that's coming out here, they they got the same I, I guess they got the same attitude as I do. Like, yo, man, they they just paying me to drive this motherfucker. But I never came on Facebook. Yeah. I never came on Facebook mm-hmm. and say, hey guys, 
what is this icon? <laughs> or why is this? Why is the check engine light is on? Obviously, your check engine light is on because something wrong with the truck. It may I not be it, it, it may I not be the engine, but it might be something wrong, something else wrong. You might want to take it over to Petro. I'm just saying. You might want to do something. And and again, um it, it, with that being said, there's so many, and I'm gonna say this, so get mad, everybody. Um, there's so many sensitive people out here, but you wanna be a boss. And I wanna say this, even if you're gonna stay a company driver, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but and somewhere in that, if you got a new truck, and especially if they gave it to you brand new, somewhere in that truck is an owner's manual. Go through that owner's manual, turn your truck on, look at the icons in the owner's manual, and look at the icons on the dashboard. And that would give you some type of idea of what that icon is. And then don't go say, well, okay, I want to be an owner-operator but you just go out and get any kind of truck and then you're confused about what's going on. Educate yourself about your vehicle. And again, I still say as a company driver, because if you, if you get in this truck and, and you leave Nashville, Tennessee, and they sending you to Dallas, Texas, and um, a belt fall off, you need to know where that belt came from. I mean, you don't have to put it on, but again, be educated about what, you're driving and and what you're doing i mean you just go well i guess people do just go buy new cars and don't know anything about their car but you know i would i want to know something about what's going on with the vehicle that i drive and i've always been very interested in what's going on up underneath that motor because i've never wanted to be that woman that didn't know anything you know and that that's that one thing that that people you know, well, she probably don't know. I can tell you what's going on with this and what's going on with that because I want to be able to hold a conversation with you because I want to know what's going on. I'm driving this truck. I don't want to be on the side of the road and be confused about exactly what's going on. And so when I decided to get my, um, decided to get my truck the very first time, I was very educated on that truck. I knew exactly what I was doing. And um, I knew exactly what kind of motor that was and what was going on with that motor. Man, Tammy, man, and so, uh, you know, usually, <laughs> usually at this point, I, I would I'll be ending this uh, the segment right now. But I, I'm going to keep it going with you, man. I'm going I'm going to keep it going, man. Okay. You, st you still got a little bit more time. Yeah, I got time. Oh, that's what's time. up. I'm I'm going to keep it going with you, man, because I mean this this not only this is this is informational, but this this is an awesome, awesome, awesome experience. Uh, no, J Mos, no, bro, no, bro. We're we're no, bro. We're not going there, man. Anyway, um, we we're going to keep it going, <laughs> man. We're going to keep it going. Um, how back then, uh. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, safety for female drivers back then, mm -hmm. how was it? Mm -hmm. uh, how how was it uh, back then? You know, you being a you being a woman of color, you being in the industry, you being in a male dominated industry, you going from state to state at you know that you haven't even touched on. You you're in situations that you're not even familiar with. How did you handle your safety back then? And how do you handle it now, pretty much? I'm going to say this. I've been very lucky. I have heard a lot of horror stories. Um, what I used to do, because I used to haul um, a lot of chicken and ice cream and stuff like that. So, you know, most, well, for us back then, most of us would drive at nighttime. So you would start off driving at nighttime and you would go through the night. And so when everybody else was getting ready to leave the truck stop, you were parking. So as soon as I parked, I grabbed my bag, went in, took my shower, got something to eat, came back to the truck. And let me say this, my curtains are always closed. When I pop the brake, my curtains are always closed. I'm never putting myself in a situation to start a conversation with anybody. People have told me I'm very anti-social. You act like you don't want to talk to nobody. And these are people who I will work with. But I was so used to just 
making sure I wasn't about to put myself in any kind of situation because I've seen where sometimes you can just be sitting in the front seat. Maybe not now, but back then you could be sitting in the front seat and people felt like you wanted to talk. People felt like it, they had the right to invade your space. So again, one of the first things I would do, I would close my curtain. Second thing I would do, I would grab my bag. Third thing, make a beeline into the truck stop, do what I had to do and come right back out. I wouldn't be, in a truck stop, lottering or anything. It's not the mall. So they don't have anything in there that I need outside of getting something to drink and something to eat. That would be it for me. And like I said, I've just been lucky. I haven't had um, ha- haven't had any close calls with anything. Just been lucky. Man, yeah. man, when you first came and, out. And, 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 oh, go ahead. And, 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 and a lot of people tell me I always keep that shit kick a look on my face, so people don't want to talk to me because I'm never smiling. You say you never say smiling. you say bump all that. Don't don't give don't don't give them a hint. You know what I'm saying? No, um, no um, eye contact unless I am talking to you. But other than that, that's it. I'm minding my business. Unfortunately, there was a female that that recently perished. Um, on the, on the highway up in Alabama, and I, right. and I talked to uh, mm-hmm. Orzel Johnson. Um, at the mm-hmm. at the time of the conversation that I had with him, I was, you know, I thought it was more of an accident. But then somebody else sent me, uh, somebody else sent me a thing about her and said that somebody actually assaulted her, and right, some somebody actually assaulted her. So. My bad for, you know, my bad for that. But that, you know, like I said, at the sure. time, at, at the time uh, when I when when me and Norzell and, you know, when me and Norzell was talking, he thought the same thing. He mm-hmm. thought that it was, you know, he thought that it was an accident, too, that she slipped and fell. But um, mm-hmm. but like I said, you know, in the in the thing that they sent me in my email, they um mm-hmm they said that she was assaulted so yeah they hopefully they find a guy or guys yeah. or whatever like that yeah. you know what i'm saying so hopefully yeah, where it happened that it was in a very odd place again i'm very familiar with that area and right there she wasn't that far from the uh mercedes uh exactly plant. that's where or- orzel was on his way to mm-hmm so when you're going west, whether you coming east or west, right there in that area, there are rest areas along there. So it was kind of odd when you, after reading that article, and they, they were saying that her doors were locked, mm-hmm. her keys were in her pocket. Mm-hmm. Like, that was, like, weird. Yeah. Like a head scratcher right that there. Like, why would your doors be locked? Yeah. Why would you? If- yeah, because... It- even if you were having a confrontation with somebody, we would have went in the rest area. We definitely wouldn't have stopped on the side of the road. I got you. I got you. Now from yeah. from now here's the follow up, everybody. Uh, she was uh, not sure where she was going. That where she was going was still, you know, it's still up in the air. But okay. they said that they said that she hit something. Uh, she hit something. She got out of the truck to check, you know, like we would always do if we hit a deer, if we thought that we hit something. So they said that they thought that she hit something and she got out of the truck. What, what I'm piecing together from what I read is I'm thinking she probably side swiped another car or another car side swiped her car came mm-hmm. up they got into a scuffle you know what i'm saying how a guy be like oh you hit my truck and you know back and forth i'm just saying this is all opinionated so don't take don't pour the cup of milk in the glass okay i'm just saying this is what right. i'm this is what i'm thinking that could had happened uh a struggle took place the person you know, probably pushed her. She knocked her head up against the the trailer or the or the uh, or the uh, 
the uh, catwalk. A uh, person probably mm-hmm. got scared and left. You know that probably right. what could what could had happened. But hopefully, you right. guy, you know, you guy or you girl, you know, come back, man, and 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 take responsibility, man, because that that driver did not deserve that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That driver did not deserve to lose her life over, you know, over a trivial matter. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so yeah, that's the information that I got uh, more. I will mm-hmm. bring, I will bring more to you uh, as, as it goes. All right. Uh, J most uh, probably, but Catherine, I mean, I think her name was Catherine. She was, she was Caucasian too. So, I I, right. I don't I don't know if if race plays an issue in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. sometimes race don't play an issue when you know when a, a car cuts us off and we hit him or her or she hit us. You know what I'm saying? I don't think a race plays an issue in that. It's just you know high tension of you hitting me or running me off the road. Mm-hmm. Or whatever reason, mm-hmm. you know, you know, a lot of these four wheelers, a lot of these cars don't like us for whatever right. reason. You know what I'm saying? They right. in a hurry. They in a hurry to get to work. They in a hurry to get home. They in a hurry, hurry, hurry. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they just look us, look at us as we're hindering their their way of life. Knowing that we bring them their way of life. I'm just saying. Absolutely. I'm just saying. Yep. I'm just saying. Um, Tammy, man, tell tell me, give give some tips uh from a female perspective of 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 your owner operation ship. Like, like how you how how you handle how you handle your business because you know, transitioning from from company driver to owner operate owner operator has its challenges um i always i always thought as far as you know being an owner operator everything is on you your taxes your health your your benefits mm-hmm. your 401k how you handle how you mm-hmm. handle all of that uh from the first time you did it and until how you handle it now um, well, I handle, you know, I, I came into it both the same, both ways, um, saved my money. When I decided that was what I wanted to do, I, I'm a goal setter. So I, I set a goal, a financial goal for myself. Once I reached that financial goal, then I start doing a little bit more research on trucks. I knew what kind of truck I wanted, but I wanted to make sure that was the truck I really needed to get into. And, you know, if that, if, if what was, you know, just all kinds of things, if it was the longevity of it and and everything. So first things for me, it's all about saving money, save your money. Don't get into it just because you're tired of being a company driver. That is not the reason to get into it. Get into it because you're really committed to, excuse me, you're really committed to setting goals for yourself. Second thing is educate yourself on the truck. Educate yourself on the truck that you're driving. Educate yourself on the truck that you're interested in. Next thing, know exactly where you want to go. And it's not always, um, I want to say, a good place to bring a truck onto where you used to be a company driver at because then they're seeing you as a hindrance then because they really can't control your bottom line. So saving your money, researching the truck and knowing exactly where you want to take that truck to. Um, having some, uh, get a tax, um, get a tax professional that, specialize in working with truck drivers. There are a lot of different people out here who work with us, but 
H and R Block and Liberty Tax and people like that, the wound the roundaway tax people, those are the people that are gonna have you in a lot of trouble. Mm. You need to research those type people and make sure those people are specific to what you do because they'll sit there and tell you, Oh yeah, we know how to do uh taxes for for truck drivers and stuff, but when you become 1099, that's a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for everything. everything. Sometimes, the, sometimes the company, they might pay for the 2290, but they're not actually paying for your 2290. They are withdrawing that out of your, um, out of your check, excuse me, out of your settlement. Um, but say if you're with someone like Landstar, they give you a deadline to pay for your 2290. And if your 2290 is not turned in, they're going to turn your fuel card off. And that means that you're not going to be able to book any freight because you haven't paid your taxes. So you have to stay on top of those type of things. Make sure that you paying your paying yourself and putting money aside for the truck. Make sure all that is separate. That does not go in the same pot. Mm. Be ready for breakdown. You know, <laughs> Breakdowns are very interesting. And just because the man around the corner down the street from your house will charge you maybe a thousand dollars to do something, it doesn't mean when you're a four or five states away you're gonna get that same deal. Mm. You know, you can be four or five states away and you have a breakdown and and you can have a, a eight thousand dollar breakdown, you can have a ten thousand dollar breakdown. So Know exactly what you're getting into. I say this, and I, I was I was against it at first, but I think it's a good way to kind of try it out. For those of you who can start off in a lease purchase, I would start off in a lease purchase. You really I would? I would make the money off. I would start, yes, because you know what? That gives you an idea to see it's exactly what you're getting yourself into. And you're doing everything basically off the back of that company. If you don't want the truck, you can walk away from it, right? But if I default on this loan, MHC is going to come after me for this. Okay. You know, okay. If, if you lease the truck from, say, like Swift or KLLM or someone like that, you probably can walk away from that. MHC is going to come after my credit. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and, and not only that, not only that, too, because they have the freight already. You can save your money. You can use them as a, as a, a stepping stone, if you would. Save your money that way. Make that money. Put that money up. Save your money. And once you reach your goal, because that's giving you, that's giving you more money than you were making as the company driver. So as a lease, uh, you can make a little bit more money. And then you can save your money. And once you reach that financial goal, then you can move on into your into your vehicle. Uh, so I, I would definitely use that as a stepping stone. Okay. And if they have any any educational tools, definitely definitely take them up on it. I remember when um, Stevens Transport and a couple of others before you could even even if you were going to go buy your own truck, you had to go through a class. Now all you have to do is just show up with a truck. Mm. Or if you are already at a company, they give you a letter of intent. You can go and get the truck, and that's it. Because mm. they they don't care one way or the other. You're responsible for everything. So whenever you can put yourself in a situation to educate yourself about it, definitely. I don't say go take some course, pay somebody to teach you how to do this. Google is free, just like games. You got to want to get into it and get it for yourself. Because it's all about your hustle when it comes to trucking. It's all about your hustle. It's your hustle. Not not complaining. What they're not doing is what you need to be doing. So I would say save, research, 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 research. And be confident in what you're doing. Again, don't go do what a lot of people are doing right now. They're just going to go get trucks. And, hey, I got this truck. Where do I need to go take this truck? I don't know. That's just like you asking me what underwear to put on. I don't mm. know mm. because it's different for each person. Man, that's damn. That's what's up, man. Just, 
man, if I need to, if if I need to learn, learn anything, I'm coming to you. <laughs> I am, I am, I am coming to you. I'm, I'm going to get all my game from you. You hear what I'm saying? When I, if it, well, well I, 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 I uh, my my thing about all of this is just no game. You know, everybody has so much game and 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 really still not giving anybody anything. You know, I, I still say if if you want to do anything, it's still all on you, and it's for you to know exactly what you're getting into. So again, you know, save your money, write your own plan out. You, you know, it's hey, it doesn't have to be professionally done. Sit down and write out or get on your phone and type out exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Start setting some goals for yourself and execute those goals. And that's just being organic. Yeah, you got everybody who can customize this and do it for you. And you can do it for yourself, too. You can do it for yourself, too. Just like we'll pick up this phone and we'll just scroll and just be in everybody's business. Get in your own business. Set some goals for yourself. Save money. Know exactly what you want to do. Stop asking people what you should do. Is What is it that you want to do? Because the road that I'm traveling down, you might not want to travel down that road. That might be something that you do not want to do. Exactly. And, I, and I'm going to say this also, too. Go ahead. Um, and no, I don't, I, I don't have my own authority, but I would like to say for those, too, like, research that too because you're still gonna have to deal with people you're still gonna you're still gonna have to learn how to how to talk to people and, and speak to people because then you're going into business for yourself 100 percent like dealing with brokers and knowing how to get in there and negotiate rates and stuff like that like i said the game is free on google you can Google, you can Google YouTube. Hey, Instagram got so much education on there. I mean, we go on, on all these other platforms, excuse me, on these platforms for so many other things. You can go on to this and research these things. You know, it's your responsibility. It's not going to be anybody else's responsibility. So, Tammy, how, and I just tell everybody, how, how do you, feel, how, how do you feel, uh, how, how do you feel now has trucking, uh, trucking throughout the years? Uh, how, how do you feel mm -hmm. that the community changed now that, uh, is so social media, uh, active now? You, you got, you got everybody and their mama on Facebook now. Every truck driver that that think he knows a thing or two on Facebook, on YouTube. How how was how was social media back then different than social media now? Well, um, the first time I started uh, talking to people in like the uh, the trucking groups, I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't start talking to people in the trucking groups until maybe, maybe 2010. Mm -hmm. I, I was on Facebook and stuff like that, talking to like classmates and people like that and family, mm -hmm. but I wasn't in the trucking groups. And when I, <laughs> when I stepped into the trucking group, oh my God, it was like, Playland on steroids. <laughs> like grown every, ass people. Everybody was <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff is so hilarious and and man, everybody on on the clout, like, look at me, ooh, look at me, look what I'm doing and blah blah blah, and getting mad. You know, what what trips me out is that when people people have accidents or things happen and then they post it and then they get mad when people start critiquing them. Well, you posted this. So you didn't think that anybody was going to say anything about what you did. You know, what was it supposed? And then everybody does this. Everybody has done this. Yeah, they probably have, but they weren't posting it. And just the, uh, to me, oh my God, the I, what I like to call the the underground side of trucking. Mm -hmm. Oh God, it's hilarious and ridiculous, and 
um, I, but I tried to get away from things like that because again, I, I am a, a little older and, and really I'm, I'm not that entertained by those things. And so I've tried to go over to more of the female based groups and try to be an, uh, an OG if you would in those situations, but people don't, it's, it's, you again you can you can lead a horse to to drink i mean excuse me to water but you can't make them drink so you know it's it's always those type excuse me it's always those type of situations so you know um some days i'll just go on and see what's going on and then some days i won't i just i disengage because it's, it's just not my thing you know uh you know to me uh with with this social media thing is that everybody mm-hmm. just comes on and just tells everything. Like, you know, back then that when fa- back then when Facebook came into play, my mom's hated, well, she still hates Facebook. She never be mm-hmm. on it. She never understands mm-hmm. it. Like, yo, why you and your sister go on Facebook and tell your business? I'd be like, well, you know, right. I now I, I even back then I never told my business on Facebook. I never came in and be like, mm-hmm. yo, I'm I'm taking the shit right now, or this is what I'm eating right now, <laughs> or or you know right. I'm on I'm on vacation in Tuguega, and you know the other guy, right. and you know on the flip side of that, somebody is looking at your post like, huh, you on vacation, huh? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Be- before that mm-hmm. r- before that ring doorbell came into play and all the security mm-hmm. cameras came into play your shit was un uh was unwatchable hmm okay let me, mm-hmm. let me go and uh see what i can get up out of there or how about these truck drivers that n- look truck drivers i'm I, look i i feel you guys y'all y'all come in y'all play <laughs> y'all some grown ass men and women but bruh please for the sake of love, stop showing your money. Ooh, I don't I care. About that, but I'm so glad you said I that. I oh, don't man. give a fuck of how much <laughs> money you're making. You're just making oh yourself God. a mark. You... Do you That's on it. you you on Instagram or 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 Facebook typing? Look, yeah, this is all the money. This is what the trucker's life. Trucker's life. Don't you know that dumb motherfucker that might be next to you? Hey, ain't that ain't ain't, ain't that uh ain't that Jay Moss over there? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Let me. Yeah, okay. Here, okay. Here we go. Wait till your ass go right to sleep, nigga. I mean, brother. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> That's one of my pet yeah. peeves. Who cares about how much money you're making, bro? Yeah. Keep that shit to yourself, yeah. man. This is what this is the now only. More, mm-hmm. Now more than anything. Now present moment. Now more than anything. It's you important. Know, I, yes. Yeah. Because I understand, you know, a lot of people have, you know, capitalized on some situations and, and you know, showing that, whoop the whoop, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, like, for real, like, like R- this is where your head is at. So exactly. That is, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, because people are, oh, you hating, no, I nah, ain't, I ain't me. hating, I'm not hating. We, me, 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 and you, me, and, me and you, Tammy. We from the old school. We, we knew. We, our, our parents told us way back in the day, don't let nobody know how much you right. make, even in, even in, a, even in a job. Like when, like even yep. in a, a regular job, when somebody come and be like, yo, they, even in a regular mm-hmm. job, they tell you, don't let your coworkers know mm-hmm. how much you make it. Yeah, okay, and and the first that that first thing that people see when you when you're showing your panties what you do you're going by the most expensive car or you drive the expensive car to the job or you're taking pictures of that expensive car i mean hey that's awesome that's great that you can afford that and that's what you want but that that's really not for everybody else you know some things are just meant to be kept to yourself and 
and we we got to learn how to we got to learn how to stop that you know and 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 that's the thing everybody just thinks that's all it is you know and yeah i know people like to have fun and stuff but yeah you know we let our panties show too much right now too much too too much man too much, too much. tammy too much. uh so I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll be OG on that. That you know, call me old school all day long. It's just same it's, here. It's a very unnecessary evil. Same here, man. We we don't. I, I don't care. I don't. I don't care to see it. I as at these times right now, with with mm-hmm. with, with with what's going on in the world right now, ain't ain't, right. ain't no time to be shucking and driving. Ain't no time to be shucking right. and driving. Yo, your best bet is to keep your money, <laughs> keep your money in your pocket, and keep your doors locked, because there's motherfuckers Absolutely. out there's motherfuckers out here plotting, there's motherfuckers out here scheming, there's motherfuckers mm-hmm. out here waiting to catch you slipping, and Absolutely. and and you'll be like, damn, what the why that happened to me? Because your monkey ass put it out there on Facebook. I'm just saying. Yeah, put it I'm just saying. Facebook, so. Uh, Tammy, yeah. what's going I'm, on, Jesus? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, all that's interesting, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Tammy, if you can go back yep. and start all over, man, would you uh would you would have got into a truck? Yes, I would have. If you couldn't, would have been a what yep. if you couldn't get in the truck, what would have been a plan B for you? Um, I would have continued on the nursing school. That's what's up. That's what I would have done. That's what's mm-hmm. up. Tammy, this man, listen, this has been an awesome conversation. <laughs> Tammy, everybody. Tub, tub, ma- no, no. Uh, t- uh, <laughs> Tam, Tam, ma- no, no. Tam, uh, got him pronounce the A. Tamara, everybody. Tamara. Tamara, everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, thank you. Thank you. Enjoyable conversation. Enjoyable lady. Your presence, your or your stories, all of it, man. Just, just, it, it was beautiful to vibe with you tonight, man. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, no problem. My pleasure. What? tips or advice that you can give these new jacks out here coming from a 19.5 year driver female driver black female driver i'm just saying what what you got for them just just create some goals stick to them and stay safe that's what's create a goal stick to them and stay safe J Mo says, "Mad props to you. Thank you, uh, J Mo, man. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much. Um, man, damn it, man, Tammy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This this has been an, this has been an enjoyable uh, conversation, man. Uh, if you guys, woo, if you, man, I'm flabbergasted. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with the lockout men, you can do that. You can come on the show." Hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or head over to uh, Instagram and hit me up over there, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'll give you the floor and we can vibe out just like me and Tammy did, man. Yo, don't forget, if you like content like this, and I hope you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so that you can get all of the content that comes out, man. I'm just saying, if you like, uh, if you like to support me or support the channel, you can do that. You can hit a brother up at the Cash App or the Coffee App. Both of them is in the description. I'm thirsty, thirsty man. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. Thank you to J Most for the ten dollars super chat. Thank you very much, J Most man. Listen, I want to have to give it to you, bro. You, you, you. You supporting the channel and you supporting the boy, and I do appreciate you. I do appreciate you. All right. Um, I I I appreciate you. 
Um, and thank you very much, man. I, I, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I like to say thank you to everybody that's watching. Thank you to everybody that's listening. Uh, and thank you to Tammy for coming on and taking her time to come on and chop it up with us, man. Thank you very much. And on that note, man, we are we we are gone. So you guys take it easy. Y'all stay chill. Peace. And I'll come at you guys with another video. Damn, man. So mean. So mean. <laughs>